Gates Adams here on behalf of Apex Trader Funding. I am here with Fasil. Fasil, how are you doing today? Good. Thank you for asking. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Um, obviously, uh, you're here. We're wanted, we wanted to chat with you about your uh, experience with your recent funding, or your recent payout, rather, with Apex Trader Funding. So congratulations, first of all, on that. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, of course. So, so let's just get a little background on you, just kind of get an idea of, of kind of where you are in, in your trading journey. First of all, how long have you been trading? Uh, it's about exactly a year now, one year. Right okay. How did you, uh, how'd you get started? What, what brought you into the world of trading? I have a friend that I grew up with who's a commercial real estate agent in Las Vegas. I grew up in Indiana and, uh, he has been doing swing trading with options for a long time. And he's always kind of like put the bug in my ear about getting started. And I never took him up on it. And last year, um, around this time, uh, what, there were some things going on in my personal life. I'm going through a separation with my wife and I kind of wanted to like make a change and do something. So I reached out to him and he was telling me about it. And then I, I did start with the swing trading. And then I realized maybe it wasn't really something that fit my personality. And then I started learning about day trading and then the the leverage with options. And I took this course that was like $6,000 and I started trading options. Um, but the volatility and the theta decay kind of um, ended up and the lack of discipline as well. I kind of like, I made a lot, lost a lot, kind of going back and forth. And then I did that all the way until the August. And that's when I discovered prop trading and futures. So gotcha. I really liked the fact about how with futures, price is price, you know, there's no theta decay. And if price comes back to where you got in at, you break even. Right. Um, you can you can be more patient with trades and you can let them develop. And uh, also the um, the prop trading uh, allows the a lot less stress, you know, from my point of view, um, sure. as far as trading with someone else's money, especially with the the deals that Apex has currently, like the Christmas one that was ninety percent off. Like you get access Always to <laughs> such a large account for um, you know pennies on the dollar, for oh, sure. Awesome. So um, that's actually January is my first green month since I started. So. Well, you know what? Now, it, you how long have you been trading in futures? Uh, since August. Since since August. Okay. So so just a few months. That's a pretty good little ramp. I mean, that's not a bad ramp up period right there. Um, so so I have to ask, when you first heard about prop firms, funding companies, Apex, just what was your first impression of the idea of somebody else paying for your trading? Um, it was exciting. Actually, the, the first time I heard about prop trading, it was it was just with, with, uh, Forex, okay. which and I was looking The spreads were kind of so big, like you were behind as soon as you get in. Oh, yeah. And I really liked the liquidity of the S and P 500. Mm -hmm. So the idea of the E mini and E micro, um, and having access to that liquidity with futures, uh, really just put it together for me that like, made it seem very, uh, like something that would be perfect for me. Um, awesome. cause I don't have the, the capital to invest, to really make the gains where, whereas I feel like I have the strategy and price action and I can be consistently, uh, net positive. Mm -hmm. And it's just the only thing I was missing was the capital. So right. prop firm was like a perfect solution. Awesome. Awesome. Now, how did you actually hear about apex? Um, I think, I think maybe through Instagram, I think I, I started actually with a different company I was trying to get funded with. And I think I started getting ads for all a bunch of different prop firms and I got the one for the text. And originally uh, with the policy before the Cyber Monday deal, the the payout was so far away with Apex. Mm -hmm. So I was, I mean, really like I've shifted more to more of a long-term uh, outlook now, mm -hmm. but initially I was like, oh, I, like, how, how quickly can I get paid? Um, so I was kind of, uh, a little bit hesitant about working with apex before with a prior policy, but now that you can get qualified in seven days and get paid in 10 days is sure. it's amazing. And especially if Different. once you get started, then it's going to be every two weeks, every two weeks, you know, right. Just staying consistent and, and having that, that, that regular cycle. So yeah. now, uh, without necessarily mentioning any names, you, you talked about the fact that you'd looked at and, and I guess worked with, uh, with, uh, another company. Other than obviously the the time frames, because obviously that's been adjusted since since you started. Um, what brought you from them to Apex? What was it about Apex that that drew you in? Well, when I was like really like looking at the different evaluations, and for me, like the the fifty thousand evaluation is like 
like the sweet spot because the the drawdown is 2500 the profit target is 3000 mm -hmm. and it's almost a one to one and then also the idea that the drawdown stops when you get to your initial balance plus 100 right is really nice because you know, even with the $25,000 account once you build up a cushion then it's like you have more and more leverage because there's no daily drawdown which right. is really nice so and I, I, I love that yeah. like which is i think is unmatched in any other, other company it, it's nice it's just it's just almost overly simplified it's profit target drawdown and once you're in just don't go below that level i mean there's some minor rules but other than that it's it, it's pretty cut and dry and i think that's what a lot of people tend to uh tend to really enjoy about that now yeah, and i I, go I was going to say i was going to add i like the the consistency rule with the um the 30% like you can't have one day more than 30% of your 10 days uh when you're requesting a payout and also the fact that the the limits on how much you can take out I think those are actually both really helpful because it just tells you, you don't, especially if you have multiple accounts, you mm -hmm. don't really have to swing for the fences. So to get the $2,000 payout on the 50K account, really it's $200 per 10 days, sure. each day of the 10 days, which is um, very doable. And then, and then if you have multiple accounts, like it's crazy. You know, I'm a high school science teacher. So one 50K account twice a month is my salary. Right. You know? That's awesome. That's the, and you know what, it's, it's, it's an interesting perspective. You know, a lot of people tend to shy away from rules, limits, anything like that. And, you know, one thing that I know a lot of traders have really found is that a lot of the rules or a lot of the structure of the way Apex is built is really designed to make you a better trader. You know, when you, when you have a bad run, you're kind of forced to stop, you're forced to reset, not only the account, but you know, reset your head. It's not pleasant. It's not what you want to have happen, but it's the best course of action as a trader. Stop, clear everything out, start fresh. And and so for a lot of traders, that's just that maybe, maybe they might not see it that way in the initial stages, but I, I think that's a great perspective to see that, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's the early stages of the game because of course those those limits do get adjusted as you, uh, uh, well, eventually they're gone. Months. You know, yeah. so so it, it, it does create this mentality of consistency. It creates this mentality that builds better trading habits. And so I'm I'm glad to hear you say that and and, and ex actually express it as an advantage. I think it's I think that's a big thing that a lot of people miss. Mm -hmm. So now you mentioned multiple accounts. Now are you currently just trading one account or do you have multiple? Um, so initially in December when I when the Cyber Monday sale first came out. Um, I qualified for three accounts and then, uh, I'm in this discord that with a guy who has like million dollar days with uh, <laughs> options, but I used his, his, his price action to help with my future trading. And he had mentioned the Christmas period as being like super choppy. And I looked back at historical data. So even though I had qualified in mid December, I didn't really start trading until January just to avoid, uh, that vol that lack of volatility, right. you know? So, and the low volume too. So um, I think probably a lot of people blew accounts, I, I would bet around New Year's. Uh, you yeah, know, I think, I think that happens, you know, every year. I, I know yeah. personally, I, I'm not a big fan of like the, uh, the last couple of weeks and the first couple of weeks of the year. Yeah. Uh, just the, the, the dynamics tend to shift just a little bit. And then all of a sudden things kind of get back to normal. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then when you have the, the, um, the catalyst events, the, the Fed announcements, the, all that stuff like really just moves the market so much. And it's much easier to, uh, to trade when it's moving. Right. And there's big moves. Uh, and then also I only trade until 11 Eastern. Mm -hmm. After that, I feel like that lunchtime chop is kind of where I've had problems. Like right. for my journey, I've, I've noticed that. So, um, yeah, so originally I got funded with three accounts. Um, and it was kind of crazy that I, I actually, the first two weeks of January, I earned $46,000. Wow. But then... <laughs> I had a freaking disaster. Oh, no. uh, which I think I actually I saw your story, like the run, runs on all the ads about oh yeah. Uh, you invested your mother's money and then um which I started doing the math and I started looking at Teslas and real estate here in Hawaii, which is crazy. Uh <laughs> and then I, I kind of got a little over ambitious on one day and I got caught on the wrong side of a trending day. So now I'm kind of resetting uh and trying to get back uh hopefully to eight accounts, eight fifty K accounts. Um right. 
by uh, the end of this month. I, I think that everybody who's achieved a certain level in trading has had that moment where they're spending that money before it's even out of the account one way or another. And yeah, yeah, and then, you know, that big can believer in <laughs> manifestation, you know, and I think when you start uh, thinking of the ways that you're going to spend the money that you don't have yet, you're actually creating a lack of money. Right. That's what you're manifesting instead right. of money. So. Well, and, uh, you know, pair that with some uh, some wild young... <laughs> <laughs> energetic uh well i i don't even know what to call it but yeah it was uh it was definitely a, a wild ride but well that's that's awesome well so so uh at this point obviously you really started to see some of the some of the fruits of your of your labors um you know it sounds like you've got a plan moving forward if you're in front of somebody who's just getting started just you know about to get their first evaluation and, and go down the road of being a funded trader What's the biggest piece of advice that you can give them? Uh, I would definitely say take your time. You know, everywhere like I look in interviews I've watched, like most people say the minimum is one year before you can be profitable, mm -hmm. you know, to make any money and then to be consistently profitable. Some people three, four, five years and definitely prop firms are the way to go while you're learning. Sure. Um, I think it's good to have some skin in the game. So not necessarily paper trading. When I originally started, I actually started with my own money and lost a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I wish in retrospect, even though I, I had heard that I, I kind of had to learn it the hard way, right. Um, that you have to go through this learning period. And sure. if you're doing it with evaluation accounts and pro accounts, at least it's not as painful as with your own money. So well, it's it, in, and in terms of, of the pain I, I do, in my opinion, and again, you know, of course, everybody's different, but in my opinion, I think that that does shorten the learning curve because there is some pain. But it's not to the same extent. I mean, we're talking a couple hundred bucks versus thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's what I was and, yeah. and so, so the, from the mindset of learning to be consistent, yes, the motivation is there because yes, there's a little bit of skin in the game. But the fear, that fear of loss, that fear of missing out, all the things that are associated with those larger numbers, they, they don't tend to be as necessarily as big a. a, a I guess a deterrent in those those early stages as someone's getting getting started. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You have to maybe get burned to be afraid of the fire. Sure. Um, so <laughs> and like I, another thing I think about is I compare like the market to well here in Hawaii like uh, spearfishing is a pretty popular activity and I do that a lot and uh, I have to check the conditions of the ocean. You know, like depending on like the moon phase and the swell and the wave height and the wind. Uh, like some days it's like perfect and you can go get a lot of fish and feed your family and friends, but other days it could be so dangerous that you could die. Right. So I think like the market is similar. Like mm -hmm. you don't need to trade every day and not all the time. You don't have to be taking trades throughout the whole day. Right. Because there's times when, you know, you almost cannot help but lose. And other times it's really easy. So like, do you want easy dollars or hard pennies? Um, you know, a lot of times it's about just preserving your capital and not, sure. not trading at all. Sure. Because the no trade is a green, green day for sure. Right. And that's that's where that discipline comes into play. And the only way to really earn the discipline is through getting in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's 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 nice to have a means of doing that without uh, without breaking the bank right off the table. <laughs> and so, well, good deal, man. Well, I sure appreciate your time. Uh, any last minute, uh, any last minute thoughts or, or statements? Oh, I just wanted to express my appreciation for for the program that's set up here. I know that uh, having access to this is truly a gift and I'm just very grateful for Apex and especially with their new rules, which make it, uh, the, the road to actually receiving money mm -hmm. is much shorter than it used to be. So I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you and we appreciate the hard work that you're doing and you know, you're, you're right there where everybody wants to be. You're getting paid. And that's really that first step to building that consistency. So congratulations once again on that. Keep doing what you're doing. And uh, we'll continue to do some of these interviews. So maybe in the next month or two, we can have a follow-up and just kind of see where you're going from there. Sound good? Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Vasily. I appreciate it, man.